were the nuns mean to you? <laughs> there were not nuns. Tell me about it slowly. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> just needing some role play. Potter. Yeah. The power play episode comes out on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> you can play uh, little Christian Julie, <laughs> who became mm-hmm. a sex therapist. <laughs> That's a really interesting arc. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hot one. I'm Julie Jeske. I'm a licensed professional counselor specializing in intimacy, relationships, and sexuality. Hi, I'm Gina, and I'm a relationship coach and a retreat leader who supports non-traditional couples all over the world. We are going to normalize and give people better information about sex and relationships. We want more people to have tools to create dreamy, connecting partnerships. We're going to talk about sex, desire, trust, intimacy, pleasure, and communication. We're going to talk about the most common things people bring into our offices, and we're going to give you tools that can help you take action in order to create a relationship that will make you swoon. This podcast is for anyone who wants to experience more pleasure, joy, and connection with themselves or others. We're going to talk about intimacy and sexuality in detail. Just a heads up, in case you want to listen later. Or with headphones on. Or in your sex dungeon. It's up to you. Hey, Gina. Hi, Julie. <laughs> um, I It's weird. I'm excited to talk about baggage, which I know a lot of people <laughs> view as this really negative, horrible yeah. thing that we bring into relationship with us. But I think that we have an opportunity to make this kind of an exciting topic for people. Yeah. Yeah. I hope. I mean, I hope so. Yeah. This came out of a, some conversations we've had now, but the um, we... I was doing some Instagram live and somebody asked, how do you not bring baggage from your past relationships into your next one? Yeah. And that is such an interesting topic. (laughs) And there's so much we could both say about that, that it only made sense. We should bring it here. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I mean, let's talk about just the term baggage, like what Mm -hmm. people mean when we talk about baggage, kind of the the energy or the connotation around baggage, right? Mm -hmm. Is this like, like I have this picture of someone just like hauling this giant duffel bag of like horrible things, trash Mm -hmm. bags, right? Mm -hmm. Hauling this and showing up for the relationship. Like here I am, honey, I'm Mm -hmm. home. I've got all my stuff right here, right? Yeah. Like one of those big backpacker hiking backpacks, right? Yes. Seriously. Yeah. 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 So it's heavy, <laughs> right? It's right. cumbersome. Messy. Right? Yeah. yeah. Gets in the way. Yeah. Um, right. Gets in the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes and we're it embarrassed been around. about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. people try to hide it, though, too. Right. It's mm-hmm. like we try to put like put it in a fancy suitcase. So maybe it doesn't mm-hmm. look as bad. Right. Mm-hmm. Like don't like the appearance Stuff it in a closet in totally. the basement and pretend it's not there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it is. It's there. And I mean, if you are an adult, if you're an adult approaching relationship, you come with life experiences. Right. <laughs> History. And so, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't have to be a negative thing. But I think part of this is the more I feel shame or worry about my baggage or judgment, Mm -hmm. self-judgment about my baggage, the more that's going to show up as problematic baggage in a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Like the more insecurity, shame, like shut down, which also is like the more I try and hide it and pretend it's not there. Yeah, right? there's that the shame The more stuff, likely right? it's going to pop out in a surprise and I'm not even yes. going to realize it. Yeah. Right? Because it yeah. is actually quite normal to have history. We could call them learning experiences. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Seriously. Traumas, right? Like all of those things inform the way we relate to people. Right. Absolutely yeah. they do. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. if I say to you, as somebody I'm dating, Julie, I have a whole lot of baggage we've got to Oof. talk about. <laughs> or if I say, you know, I've been through some things that are going to, yeah. that like change the way I do relationships now. Yes. Can we talk about them? Oh my God. Those are totally different frameworks for a conversation. Yep. Yes. About our history. Yeah. Right? That's like the biggest thing I want people to take away from this conversation we're having, mm-hmm. Gina, is that so much of baggage is about our perception of it, right? And mm-hmm. so when we come to the table saying, here's what I've learned, here's where I've been, here's what's been hard, here's the work I've done, here's something I feel a little of um, embarrassment or energy around, it's very different than like, oh God, I hope you don't find out that... Mm-hmm. When I was 30, I did this thing or my last relationship yeah. ended this way or I have 
this credit score or whatever it is, yeah. right? Like the stuff that we view as negative that we're mm-hmm. afraid someone's going to have a, have a reaction to is yeah. way more challenging in relationship. Well, and I also will say like baggage, we think about it only as like the negative experiences, but all of our experiences Ah. influence the way we're showing up now. Mm -hmm. And so like, if I feel like I've always been like the funny guy at school, and then I've been like the funny guy with my friends, I'm going to think I'm, I've got this great sense of humor with you, but your sense of humor might be different than mine. Or if everyone I've ever slept with has said like, you're a great lover, faked their orgasms with me, I'm going to come into my next partnership, assuming whatever my skills were with those past ones works with this new person yeah and it may not work with this new person or it may not work at all and you (laughs) might not have gotten (laughs) clear (laughs) feedback you know like it might be so sometimes it can be like we've got these kind of like positive stories like this is who I am yeah that also aren't necessarily accurate but we don't really talk about that with the same frame that we do baggage is like something to be ashamed of yeah and um, all of it, could, there are patterns, all I'm saying is there are patterns we've picked up and like stories we've learned about ourselves through our relationships that there's no way to not have them impact yeah. how I we're showing up I love that. There now. are stories we've learned about ourselves through our relationships mm-hmm. and that's what we're bringing and that's what we're yeah. bringing. You know, if we're dynamic well, humans, that's yeah. what we're bringing. How often do you see people in session, Julie, right, who are like, my ex said that I'm manipulative. Am I really yeah. manipulative? How oh, am I being yeah. manipulative? And then they're like all worked up about it, right? Or my totally. ex said whatever. Like, get, So yep. one person gave me this piece of negative feedback. Yeah. I'm usually on their way out the door. And that now is kind of one of the ways that I'll carry in like a hypervigilance about, is this true right. about me? Yep. Right. Or my family says I'm the selfish one or I'm the mm-hmm. smart one or whatever it is. Right. It's like it, then it becomes not just something someone said, it becomes truth in our mm-hmm. mind. Right. And then we bring that forward. And sometimes those things can really get in the way, really mm-hmm. get in the way. Yeah. And one other way that I'll see it come up or like that we can carry things sort of from relationship to relationship um, is folks who are still grieving their most Uh, recent losses. Right. And that we recently were talking you and I I think about like, how do I know when I'm ready to move on Mm -hmm. or when I am, you know, ready for the next relationship? And that's one of the places I see it come up a lot is um, folks who are still grieving and um, yeah. readiness aside, because I don't know about readiness in this baggage conversation. But, right. you know, if you are still if you're on your first date with a new person and you want to cry with them about how sad you're feeling about the last person, that might not be what they the person you're now dating showed up for. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice way of framing it, Gina. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? And you yeah. might want to do that that processing with some other people. Right. I mean, that's yeah. a big part of this is that, you know, often if I were to just, you know, whoever's listening right now, if you think about here are all the, like, think about what is your baggage? What is the baggage mm-hmm. you bring? Listed in your brain, right? Mm-hmm. And then the next question I would say is like, what, what work have you done around it? If you view it as baggage, as a negative thing, is there work for you to do around it? Are there ways mm-hmm. for you to shift it? If maybe you're thinking of like, my baggage is actually like, this person's lucky. I'm bringing all this great Gucci yeah. gear along on our next relationship, <laughs> right? Like they're lucky. Mm-hmm. Like that can be baggage too. I just happen to be like equipped with some really fun tools that I'm bringing forward, yeah. you know? But like, if you have major negative stuff around the baggage that I want to use in air quotes that you're bringing, one thing to start exploring is is doing your own work around it so you don't mm-hmm. have to feel ashamed or embarrassed or worried about it. Yeah. Okay, so how can we start to identify what our baggage is? Yeah, what, like, yeah what I was thinking maybe we name is. some common like things we hear people mm-hmm. say is baggage, right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of it, I will say, a lot of what I see people naming as baggage um, falls under stuff that if you haven't listened to our attachment theory episodes, <laughs> you might want to, we'll link to those in our profile, yeah. therapyden.com slash swoon, mm-hmm. um, because um, a lot of them are this like clinginess, neediness. Um, I've been told that I, you know, that I'm too dependent or I'm codependent or I yeah. will hear the opposite, right? I've been told I'm a commitment phobe yeah. or I'm like uh, avoidant, avoidant, avoidant yeah. of conflict. I'm too distant, right? Um, that kind of stuff. I hear that yeah. a lot. And, yeah. um, and those terms break down into attachment theory really easily. Yep. Well, yeah. 
Yeah. Listen to those episodes, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what um, else do you see? Past, just past relationship stories. Mm-hmm. Like I've had a divorce. I have baggage. I did. Mm-hmm. I don't have much dating experience. That's baggage. Mm-hmm. Um, all my relationships end after this period of time or all, you know, it's like the stories of all my relationships yeah. did this or, or, oh, here's a baggage that I've worked with people around. Um, every time I'm in relationship, and we break up, the next person they date is the person they marry. That's like a big baggage (laughs) story, right? Like Mm -hmm. um, sometimes- I fixed them and now they found somebody else to be in love with, (laughs) right? Yeah. 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 What is that always a bridesmaid? I like what you're naming about like, it's often stories we have that we tell ourselves, right? Like this Mm -hmm. always happens, right? Like somebody's always going to cheat on me or I'm always going to fall into cheating or always been betrayed. um, Yeah. I have a divorce and therefore I can't do relationship or I'm broken or I'm unlovable or something, right? It's that meaning that we make out of it that often is the baggage because we'll, Mm -hmm. we then will look for in our lives kind of like other storylines that mimic that to kind of like Mm -hmm. verify for us oh yeah that's true that's true Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when maybe there's a little more wiggle room yeah yeah and 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 the truth though is sometimes we can bring hurt that's not processed that can become an obstacle in relationship right Mm -hmm. so it's like you know most adults have a relationship history like you said and if I haven't processed how I feel about it if I you know was betrayed in some way and haven't done any work around it and I just show up to my next relationship either expecting to be betrayed again or expecting this new person to pay penance for what happened in my last Mm -hmm. relationship because I see both of those dynamics playing out right um we're going to have problems. If I mm-hmm. have a lot of energy that I haven't worked through around past relationships, around either how I showed up in relationship or how unmet I felt in relationship, that's going to get in the way. And that's when the, mm-hmm. the baggage becomes the obstacle, right? It becomes in between me and my person. Mm-hmm. That's when it becomes really problematic. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, like I think there's that part of it like getting in the way um, that I see come up when folks say they have trust issues. Oh, thank you. A lot is one of the one of the stories of baggage, right? Like yes. I have trust issues and it comes up in all kinds of wacky ways. Yeah. Um, and often that is because my trust has been violated by mm-hmm. myself or by other yeah. people or both in right. the past. Right. Um, and, you know, I, I think there's a lot of I, there's a lot of folks who will say, like, you can't love someone else until you love yourself. And I don't always know that I believe that's true. I kind of think it's both. I want to love myself and love other people. And hopefully I can do that simultaneously. Yeah. Right. And then I can learn to love myself even more by having someone else's love reflected toward me. Like I think there's mutuality and reciprocity that can happen in a beautiful way. Yeah. Like I can work on my trusting myself issues. Yeah. If I'm like getting a little bit more discerning and really paying attention to my internal cues and getting clear about my expectations and setting boundaries and asking for what I need and following through on my own boundaries, right? Like all of that's ways that I can work on my own trust. I can't necessarily work on my trust with other people unless I am relating with other people, (laughs) like communicating those needs and having them be reflected back or having someone follow through on what they say they're going to do. And like that relational part is also part of my healing, whatever my trust hesitations are. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 I've been hearing a lot, Gina, lately, and and tell me if this is something that comes up for you. A lot of my work recently has been around the sexual baggage people feel. And Mm -hmm. they'll use that term. Like, I've had multiple people in the last three months say, well, I've got all this baggage around sex. Like, Mm -hmm. like, oh, my sexual... if, If only... I could let go of my baggage. If only I've had people say, if only I could rewrite my sexual story because Mm -hmm. so much baggage just gets in the way, right? Yeah. Is that something that comes up for you too? Yeah, and I'm going to just like put an asterisk and then Mm going to once again say go to therapyden.com slash loom (laughs) because we are going to link two episodes we have done. One about um, trauma and sex. Yeah. Yeah. And one about shame and sex, yes. because a lot, Good. I would okay. say the vast majority of what I hear called sexual baggage is really sexual Ooh, shame. It's all shame. Related yes. to like, one time I had erectile dysfunction. One time right. I farted in front of somebody. This one time yeah. my uh, boob fell out in a way that I didn't think was sexy. And now I'm yep. afraid my boobs are going to show up weird or like, yeah. you know, like whatever the thing was, yep. right? Like, yep. 
um, that are like uh, the mistakes and bloopers that happen yes. during sex or just like I had a weird mismatch one time. Right. And now I'm really afraid that that means something about me as a lover or partner or companion yep. or desirable human. Yep. And, yeah. Or we kept sex yeah. kept going sideways with my you know former partner or we didn't mm -hmm. have a lot of sex or I felt like they only wanted to have sex with me, but I didn't have any say like all of those mm -hmm. situations are situations that then can become stories that are on yeah. a loop, right? And once the story is on a loop, then we are no longer in the present connecting in an authentic way. We're like stuck in the story of the past. And that often brings a lot of fear about what's going to happen in the present or future. Yeah. Yeah. What, um, what do you do then if you've got baggage? <laughs> what do we do about it? Because now we're saying everybody's got some baggage. Everybody's got right? it. Yeah. Yep. Right. So here we are. Julie and Gina. Julie, do you have baggage? Validating. <laughs> I, I have baggage. <laughs> yeah. Mine's like so pretty though. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have baggage. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah. Um, and, and on any we given day. Yeah. On any given day, I feel better or not okay about it, right? Depending mm -hmm. on how it's received, you know, or how I'm afraid it's going to be received. But I think yeah. like a big part of it is, is kind of like dissecting it a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. is this true? Is part of it. Mm -hmm. Like my fear is it means all this stuff. Like we love yeah. stories, man. Our brains, we love a good story. We are so mm -hmm. attached to it. Um, it often has like a not great connotation because we've got the negative bias in our brains, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, Part of what I'll ask is like, is that, do I actually know that that is true or is that mm -hmm. my fear, right? Yeah. Um, sometimes pulling back and looking at it like not so close up just as my baggage, but like more objectively and being able to go like, right, Gina told me she's got baggage. I know, you know, I know Jeff's baggage because we Marco Polo all the time. Like, and I like them and they're good stuff. people. Yeah. So like, I probably am a good person too, right? So like mm -hmm. sometimes there's that like the sharing piece not and the attaching observing. your worth to it is what yes. I'm hearing. Like you're totally lovable and going to be okay. Yep. And that's, and yeah. you also have a history. Both things yeah. are true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a piece of who I am. It's not all of who I am or it's an experience I've been, I've been through. It's not who I am. And mm -hmm. the truth is because we all come with our own stuff. There are some people who won't like the stuff I come with. Like I'm mm -hmm. so aware of that. Right. Yeah. There are other people who are dying for the baggage that I've got to bring to them. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, come sure on. Do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I think about that. Like I have sessions with people where they're like, I just feel so broken and like there's something wrong mm -hmm. with me because of this thing. And that to me, it's like the weight and the shame of the yeah. baggage. Like you're talking about like shame says like you're the only one who is unlovable in this way. And right. we are saying, nope, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you're, you're not unlovable. <laughs> like we all have stuff. It's OK. Know what your stuff yeah. is. Yep. Right. And you don't have to let it weigh you down. Yeah. So like so heavily. Yep. And definitely you can go to therapy then and yep. find yourself a therapist to work through some of this or find yourself a coach to like just naming it with somebody yes. and having them be like, yeah, dude, right. is so helpful in alleviating some of that it's shame huge. about it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Getting that support is so big. So and big. And that can be a really helpful way to notice the stories and have somebody be like, oh, hey, you know, every time you go on a first date, you kind of use this same phrase or you say these kinds yeah. of things. I'm just noticing that. Or like, And that will help you identify the stories, having a sort of learning partner and your therapist right. or your coach, right? Absolutely. I love yeah. that. Yeah. And um, then the other thing I like that you're naming is like discernment about like, do I actually want to carry this forward with me? Yeah. Is this really true? Um, you know, or can I carry it in a different way? Yeah. Right? Like, Ooh, can I carry it in a different way? I love that, yeah. Gina. Yeah. I mean, like instead of my trust issues being like, um, I'm going to be hyper vigilant about everywhere my partner goes <laughs> and ask them 10 questions and Facebook stock all their best friends and sometimes sneakily look on their phone Instead yeah. of that, I'm going to say, hey, I've had some history where people have really broken my trust. Mm. And so sometimes that comes out in like, I want a whole lot of information um, to, to like my new partner that I'm yeah. dating, right? Like yeah. Sometimes it's going to come out in like ways where I really want all the info and really what I need is to know you really like me and you're not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> right? Give me that validation. Right. Yeah. Totally. See how mm -hmm. different that is? People who are listening, like, the, like it's all about that trust piece, but the way we frame it and the way mm -hmm. we make, uh, the way we name it and the way mm -hmm. we make requests around it, like that shifts everything. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's big. I have a history of cheating on my partners. So, yeah. you know, what I want you to know is this is how I'm, to, I'm like going to let you know if I find a crush on somebody and how yeah. like, you know, or if that comes up, like I, this is how I could see us like working together on that. Right. Yes. Like, what do you think is a yeah. whole different way than just like I have I have this shameful baggage about being a cheater. I'm just not even going to talk to you about it. And then yeah. I'm going to probably end up happen. in the same cycle. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So on every episode, we like to give our resources and our action steps. Yes. And, and mm -hmm. Gina, you've been naming some of our, our past swoon episodes that will be helpful yeah. for folks and give more information on some of these topics we're talking about. You can find mm -hmm. those on our website, therapyden.com slash swoon. Mm -hmm. Um, we always list, you know, you can find a therapist on therapy den as well as you're one, if you're wanting someone to support you with the baggage piece as well. And then I have a, a releasing ritual that I've been doing with folks, uh, around sexual baggage. Um, mm -hmm. and I will make sure it's listed on our website too, therapyden.com slash swoon, but I'll just briefly describe to you. Um, it starts with really getting clear about what it is you think is your baggage. Because so often people say, I've got sexual baggage and just leave it at that. And it becomes this big thing that gets in the way. And so I have people mm -hmm. write down, what are all the things that make up your baggage? And some people go way back, right? Like, you know, I was shamed for masturbating when I was a kid or no one taught me anything. And so everyone laughed at me when I didn't know what a blowjob was. Or, you know, it's like all those stories that still live inside of us Mm -hmm. that can like show up and make us feel either insecure or, um, you know, coiled up in shame, right? Um, all the interactions that didn't go well in the beginning of our relationship that I still like feel hesitant or tentative around, right? Or, or mm -hmm. my aging body is this baggage I feel, or the fact that like my body isn't responding the way I want it to. All the things, you write them all, 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 all down, look at them, like really get clear, like what do you want to bring forward? Like, what do you actually want to hold on to as you're engaging sexually? And what do you want to let go of? And then when you're ready to like not have things that are like swimming around in your brain, you have a ceremony. If you're in relationship, I've had couples do this together where they burn it, burn mm -hmm. it and be mm -hmm. done with it because those are just stories. They don't have to, we don't have to carry them. We don't mm -hmm. have to carry them. We have to name them sometimes so we know what they are. And, um, but then to have them like playing on repeat doesn't necessarily serve us. Yeah. I love that. To just like really get clear about what you want to keep and what you're going to yep. let go of. Yeah. Right. I, can I make a recommendation yes, that the please. ones you keep, you create a request for yourself mm. or a request for your partner out of those ones. Ooh. Right. So if I'm keeping, like I learned this thing and it's hard, then what do I, how do I want to like work with that within I myself? And what do I actually need or want from a partner, right? Yeah, yeah. So that yeah. it's not just, like you said, kind of vague, like I have baggage about dogs. Now we can say like, okay, when a partner has a dog, these are a couple of things that really help me with yeah. feeling safe around dogs or whatever, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So we can yeah. move forward in a different way mm -hmm. instead of just feeling stuck or stopped, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I would add this to our, to our action step or resource list as well as like, if you've got any baggage around pleasure, which I know a lot of people do, um, there's a lot of like shame or, or, or feelings mm -hmm. of like deserving or worth or discomfort around pleasure or around sex in general, Gina and I do have our super sexy four part mm -hmm. series coming up this spring, best sex of my life. And the first workshop is all about pleasure. So we're covering yeah. pleasure, we're covering desire, we're covering I mean, communication I and spicing it up. Baggage coming up in all three of those, right? right? Like the spice it up one is where people Ooh, yeah. tell us about like the time that they wanted to do something new and different and that was really hard and so yeah. now they're afraid to do new and different things, right? Yes. Or the communication is about bringing uh, it into the light and sharing it with a partner. Totally. Um, and desires and pleasure oh are both, gosh. like you said, we have these hesitations about, is it okay to desire yeah. or want this thing? Is it okay to feel good? Right. Um, is it too much? So yeah. Is it not enough? There's a lot of energy around that stuff. So yeah. come chat with us about that. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be so good. You'll find the link on our website, therapyden.com slash swoon or on Gina's website, heyGina.com. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't let you tell people how to find you. I just now got you so did. excited. Now you did. I did it for you. I have okay. no baggage about that. It's just <laughs> mine. <laughs> 
Thank you, Julie. Okay, I'm going to release my baggage around usurping that and just like <laughs> accept it and move forward that now people know how to find you. Yeah, we're findable. And, yep. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go from there. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you.